Now, let's talk about Dragoljub Yanosevich. That rating there is his national rating, not his international rating. He was not yet anything other than a national master. He would eventually become an international master and then a grandmaster the following year. Let's see. So, Dragoljub Yanosevich was born July 8th, 1923, passed away May 20th, 1993, just a couple months shy of his 70th birthday. Day. He became an IM in 1964 and a Grandmaster in 1965. And he did make it to the finals of the Yugoslavian Chess Championship several times in the 50s and 60s. He did score victories over Bobby Fischer, Mikhail Tal, and Tigran Petrosian, but he was never able to string enough first-class results together to reach the world's elite. This was a training game, one of many training games that Bobby played in preparation for the interzonal. We have E4, C5, the Sicilian defense, Knight F3, and D6. D4 is going to bring us to an open Sicilian after pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, knight F6, knight C3, and of course, Nidorf's variation comes with a six. That's named for Miguel Nidorf. Bishop g5 and pawn e6. Now this transposes to the Scheveningen variation. Now Scheveningen is the name of one of the eight districts of The Hague. And that's in the Netherlands, in case you don't know. Queen d3 was played here. And bishop to d7. The book move is actually queen's knight to d7. Bobby going with bishop to d7. F4, one of my favorite moves from the white side of this opening, if not my favorite. Knight c6, queenside castles. Now rook c8, putting the rook on the open file and in line with the white king, and so immediately king b1. Bishop e7 breaks the pin, and rook to g1, no doubt intending to push the g-man, but knight f3 being called for, my mind was on knight b3. Knight b3 is a move in a position like this one. I get a star for that. Rook g1 from Yanosevich. h6 interrogates the bishop. The bishop retreats, and we hit it again with g5. Now that is questioned by the annotator, which calls for b5. I was curious about knight takes knight here. You've got your rook on this file. You can create further access with tempo here. Ah, inaccurate. After queen takes, then I might play d5, to be honest. I get a star for that. Let's go back. g5 from Bobby Fischer. Pawn takes the pawn, and now knight g4. If you play pawn takes the pawn... Your opponent will play knight takes the knight, hit the queen, and that will compel bishop takes the knight and bishop g5. You can then play queen a5, though. If, coming back after pawn takes the pawn, if white plays bishop takes the pawn right away, you can play knight to e5. Now let's go back to the actual game where Bobby played knight to g4. Knight takes knight was played here, and bishop takes the knight. I thought rook takes deserved some consideration because you want to keep that rook active. Let's see what we get. And the bot taking of second. I do get a star at last. Probably bishop here, and then I can take the pawn. Okay, let's go back. Bishop takes was Bobby's choice, and queen e2 here, attacking the knight. Queen d4 being called for here. And queen d4, very tempted to play e5 and hit the queen. Force you back to d3. That gets a star. Or d2. Back, back, back. Queen e2 was played, hitting the knight. Pawn takes pawn, discovers an attack on the bishop, so bishop g3. Now queen b6 lining up with the king. And that, of course, is threatening the bishop to f6, which then attacks the knight, which is no longer defended because the pinned piece cannot do its job. So black really fighting for an advantage here. Yanosevich plays queen takes the knight. And 
Well, grab the rookie and eat it like a cookie. Knight d5, quite a move here. That gets an x glam. Now, the point is, let's talk about some don'ts here. Number one, he's attacking your bishop, so you could play bishop d8. That's a do. We'll look at that in a moment. But do not play pawn f5 and say, I'll attack your queen. On pawn f5, that gets a blunder. Pawn takes the pawn, and pawn takes the knight. Then we have bishop d3. And that discovers an attack on your queen. And that cannot be pleasant. On the other hand, you cannot play knight, a uh, pawn takes knight because the pawn is pinned to the rook. So that would be immediately disastrous. Now the bot was calling for bishop takes knight, but I would think you can play bishop to d8 here. And I do get a star for that. All right, knight d5, bishop takes the d5. Now wait a moment. When I played f5, didn't it call for bishop takes d5? It did. But now on bishop d5, it says, no, you should play the move that you said earlier, bishop d8. That's funny. Fickle bot at it again. Bishop b5 check. What a move. That's quite a move, isn't it? Discovering the attack on the queen. So pawn takes the bishop. Rook takes the queen. And you get two rooks and a bishop. Excuse me, two rooks and two bishops against a queen, a rook, and a bishop. Rook c4 pins the pawn so that it cannot take the bishop. Pawn b3 hits the rook. The bot calling for rook e1. Can I now play f5? I would think so. Force the queen out of there. And after queen d1, pick up the pawn. Threaten the fork here. That seems pretty strong. Anyway, b3 was played. Rook takes the pawn. Queen to d1 here. Now pawn to f5. Pawn to h3. Pawn to g4. Queen to d3 right here. Pawn to f4. Hmm, b4. b4 might be stronger. Bishop f2 was played. By the way, don't take that pawn with your queen. That gets a question mark. Bishop c6. And guess what? You've got two pieces on priests. Save your queen, lose your bishop. But bishop f2 not being preferred. g3 here makes the bishop move again. Bishop d4. And again, obviously, don't, don't play here either. Same, same comment. Same exact thing. It's just different. You still have two pieces on priests. I guess I don't have to say the same thing twice, but for some people, you do. Bishop d4 was played, and Bobby Castle's here. I have to chuckle at that. Rook h4 being the definitive move. Hmm. King b2. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of things that seem like they could be played. Even a3. Oh, that's a big red x. But king b2. Rook f5. Right. Right. I think rook d4 is coming next. The idea behind rook takes d4 is the bishop skewering along the long diagonal. Right. Can I do that right away is my question. I get a check mark for it. And the point is you cannot take because of this move. It's just too greedy, isn't it? So you'd have to try something like, ah, oh yeah, that's why. That's why I played rook f4 first, so that queen g6 check cannot be played. It's an obstruction, isn't it? It's sort of a blocking move. Yeah, the problem here is if you don't play rook f5 first, then it's a repetition, isn't it? So that's why we play rook f5 first. Really nice move. Prevents the repetition. c3 here. Bishop c6. Rook d1. Bot calling for queen d1. Maybe rook f1 should be considered as well. Oh, I'll get a big red x for that as well. I was doing so good earlier in the night. I've had three double x glams tonight, but it seems to come and go, right? I, I'll get a bunch of good marks, and then I'll get a bunch of derogatory marks from the annotator. Anyway, king f7 here. B4 is an interesting consideration because the pawn becomes overworked. Get a thumbs up for that. Now here's, a, again, Ficklebot says this is inaccurate, but when I play b4, it says, no, you should play king f7. So once again, Ficklebot up to his old bad habits. When I play my move, it says Bobby's move is best, but when we play Bobby's move, it says that's a mistake. That's inaccurate. Well, make up your mind, Ficklebot. Make up your mind. Now rook f1 was played. Pawn e5. Here even b4. I like this b4 idea because... The pawn is overworked. In other words, you cannot play pawn takes pawn because rook takes bishop. Double x glam number four. Double x glam number four. And again, the point is the rook cannot be captured because of bishop to f6. Blunder and bam. Ah, that felt good after all those derogatory marks from the bot. Anyway, e5 from Bobby. 
I really liked that idea. I had my mind on it for a long time. Bishop b6, rook h5. Hmm. Yeah, even b5 here is another idea. No, bot calling me inaccurate there as well. Ah, it was sh so short-lived, chess dude guy. Rook h5. <laughs> Queen f3 here, hitting the rook. Big red x. a4, yeah, a4 superior here. And if he takes the pawn, you push your other pawn here. Bam. So I did get an X glam on that one. Queen F3, Rook H8, Queen G4, Rook H6, King C1, Rook G6 hits the Queen, Queen H5 pins the Rook, King G7 prevents infiltration, no more coming to H7. H4, Bishop D7 here. Yeah, threatening Bishop G4 and the Queen is trapped. So Queen F3, avoiding the trap. Queen D1 apparently more active. Bishop C6, defending. And we're going to have a repetition. Rook H6. If you try to get creative here and play like F3, he's got Rook takes F3. It's marked inaccurate. Actually, it changed it to an X. So let's just go for the repetition. Probably because Rook E1. No, Rook takes pawn. Yeah. Not queen takes pawn, by the way, obviously, because then, bam. So f3 might be creative. Anyway, rook h6, queen g4, rook g6, queen h5, and that is a threefold repetition.